morning. Is this breakfast or lunch? <laughs> it's always good for food. Or third or fourth breakfast. I would say he had two breakfasts and this is his first lunch. Diesel, what do you think of our new bathtub? It's very nice. It's very yeah. So it is. We had our bathtub redone yesterday. So much better. The old grout uh, between the tiles that was up here was cracking and it definitely wasn't sealed anymore. So they ripped everything out, uh, repaired everything that needed to be repaired behind there and it's all this for us. We got bath fitters to do this. I'm kind of glad they did because they did a much better job than I would have done. It's perfect. One thing checked off the list. I am headed back to the truck today. We gotta take a short trip into Saskatchewan and we have a reload plan to bring us right back already so it should be a nice little rounder. Just waiting for this little guy to finish his meal here and get a few burps out. Get prepared. You might have some anger. No? Not even? No he knows angry. the camera's on him. No anger. No angry moments. He Lately. not like his food being finished. Yeah. Lately he's had an issue when his bottle's empty. <laughs> Let's get a big burp. Come Got a burp? Everybody a burp. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. <laughs> there it is. Good it's a good start. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> So the load I'm taking, uh, I got a pickup south of Winnipeg in a town called Brunkild. I've been there before. And pull it over to Weyburn. I have one stop in Weyburn and another town, and another one in another town just a little bit west of there. I forget what it's called. Lamb, Lambert, or Lamb, Bam, Lamb, Bam, Lamb, 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 something. I'll, I'll tell you in a little bit. Uh, so I got two drops on that, and then I head back to Weyburn for a reload, and that comes back to Winnipeg. So just a quick little... No old blue here. Old blue is in the shop, getting fixed over at PBX. It had a wire or a connection that was bad on the engine speed sensor. I think I explained this to you last week already, right? It was the engine speed sensor was uh, not communicating with the ECM properly, so it was causing the engine to run and idle just a little bit rough. Maybe the average person couldn't tell, but I could tell I know my truck. Wasn't idling right. And it also kicked off the engine light. Pardon me, it kicked on the engine light twice. I was able to clear it both times so that it went away. So the, it was just a bad connection, that's all I knew. So they went over all the wires and everything and the sensor itself and the plugs. They found one prong in one of the plugs that was a little bit off by the sounds of it. So they replaced that, took it for a spin. They say it's all ready to go. So I'm gonna bring the pickup in here. Britt's gonna pick me up here, bring me to the truck. And then I've got to head off on a trip. It gets harder and harder to leave home each time. But man's got to work. That's how the world works. For a little bit. Now the oil temperature gauge started to rise. I'm gonna lift that RPM up a little bit. Looking at my oil pressure in there. Looking good. So the issue I was having with this truck was that when the engine was fully warmed up after you know driving some distance, pulling some freight, and I stopped and the engine came down to an idle. I could hear a little bit of a misfire. Very subtle, very subtle. Someone who's not used to the truck may not hear that something was going on. 
but it sounded sort of like, like as the engines idled. Very subtly, you can hear it out the exhaust. Wasn't making the truck shake or anything, but it was idling a little bit rough at higher idle. So I bring the idle up to about 1,000 RPM when I'm sitting, usually, to keep my oil pressure up, right? And I could tell that the engine was vibrating the truck a little bit more than usual. That means that it's it's not firing at the precise right time. And my engine light popped on on my dash twice. So I pulled over when it happened. I, I looked up the code on uh, what, I, what I could look up and it said engine speed. So I looked up what that could be, engine speed sensor. That's what senses how fast the crank shaft is moving and how fast the engine is moving. Tells the computer and then the computer tells the injectors and the rest of the engine to spray fuel into the pistons at the right time, right? I'm simplifying this because I'm a simple guy. It, it tells the engine that it just makes sure that everything is in time in the engine, right? That everything's happening at the exact right time to make it run smooth. If there's not good communication between that sensor and the ECM, it could cause a little bit of a rough idle because it's it's just a little bit off. Not everything is in perfect harmony, right? And it's like, what's going on here? I don't know, ask the sensor. And the sensor, I don't know what's going on. And maybe the sensor's getting old. You know, you just gotta say goodbye and get a new one. Fortunately for me, I didn't have to get a new one this time. I just had to replace some of the connections. So the sensor has a wire that goes down to the computer, obviously there's a couple of plugs on there. One of those plugs, like I was telling you, was a little bit damaged, a little bit old. One second, I have a phone call here. Likely spam, go away. I like it that my phone tells me that. I'm so sick of those spammers all the time. And you know what? Here's one thing, a little bit of a rabbit trail here. I like to donate to my political party of choice, right? We won't go too much into politics here on my channel because well, that's a, that's a can of worms I don't want to open right now. Maybe another day. But I like to donate to my party of choice, the one that I support, right? You know what bugs me? Is every time I support them and I give them money and say, here, here is my support. I get, like, I want to almost say harassed by phone calls and emails constantly after that. If you give them your actual phone number and your actual email address, which I want to do, because I want to keep up with what the party's doing, right? A little hint, it's not the party that's running the country right now. I, I supported uh, the other one, the other one. But they, they, they send me email after email after email, then they phone call me too, and if I block the number that they're calling from, they'll call me from a different number the next time, and call me and call me and call me. And when I say hello, it won't be like, hey, do you have a few minutes to discuss, you know, your contributions or maybe contributing more to the party? No, it's just like, wham, right into their speech, right? It's like, oh, the, the government is doing this, the government is doing that, it's all bad, right? You should support us more. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. First of all, I agree with you. I'm on your team. You have my support. Please stop calling me now. I, I, I will give you money when I have it to give. You don't need to come and beg for it from me, but I understand, I guess, that's how they have to fundraise money. It's politicians, right? Just... I want to support them, but every time you do, you get constant spam calls from them for the next, like, six months until you tell them, hey, take me off your list. And then the next time you go back on their list because you give them more money. It's... Whatever. Whatever. I just want things to be better. I want things to be better, and I want the other guy to win. Okay? Whatever I gotta do to help. Now that that's out of the way, let's go back to talking about trucking here. This is, I, I try not to make my channel about politics, okay? So we dabble and then we go back to the topic that we're talking about here. So there we go, that's out of the way. A little rabbit trail, spam phone calls. Do you get those too? You get those? Does the other side do that? Does the other team do that too? Because I know my team does that. And I, I'll, I'll admit that's one thing that my team does that I don't like, you know, but okay. It is what it is. <laughs> what were we talking about? The engine light. Okay, we we got to make sure that the engine is running smoothly. So that's what the sensors do. I hate these sensors. They make things a little bit more complicated. But anyways, that, that's what was happening. So I brought it here. I told them what happened. It happened to me twice. I was able to clear the engine, uh, engine light by cycling the engine three times and then letting it idle for about two minutes. And then the engine light would clear. That's what Google told me to do. And it worked for once Google was right. Go figure, it happens. A broken clock is right, twice a day. So it worked. And then I brought it here, because if you have an engine light, I don't want to let that fester. I brought it here, told them what happened. They're like, yeah, yeah, it's, it's probably that. They'll, they'll take a look into it, and sure enough, 
I was right. Made me feel a little bit good about myself. Like, wow, I figured something out. <laughs> you know that feeling when you figure something out and you're like, I am awesome. Sort of had that feeling for a split second. And then I realized, okay, let's calm down. I'm glad that they figured out what was going on. They fixed the problem. I'll see what happens now. All codes are cleared and the engine is running smooth. I have it at 800, 800 RPM right now. Let's bump it up to a thousand. this truck all the way warmed up now pretty much oil temperatures up to 200 water temperatures both just below 200 check one more time sounds beautiful awesome okay now that I've double triple checked everything I believe the issue has been fixed let's get going I got a bobtail to Brunkhill I will not need to tarp either of these loads this week. So it'll be pretty simple. I'm gonna slowly back myself out of here. There you go. These guys take such good care of my truck. And they know me by name when I come in there, which is awesome really good guys to work with. It's like a bunch of friends here. At least I feel that way. City. Practically the exact same distance. It's one kilometer further. And then you get four lane divided, and there's a Tim Hortons on the way. That's the most important part. How you feeling, old blue? Back to 100%? It's good. It's good. I like to take care of these issues when they're little issues, like when they're very subtle and very small. I don't want them to fester and become big problems. So as soon as I see a problem, I like to determine what it is right away. You never want to be left stranded somewhere, especially up here. I mean, now it's summertime, it's, it doesn't get very cold at all. It's, it's supposed to be hotter than it is now, but we're having a pretty cool July. I paid my taxes, so it worked. The weather's cooler. But in winter time, I mean, you don't want to be stranded anywhere when it's minus 30 or minus 40 or below. You want to make sure that your truck is tip top shape and ready for the winter.
this weekend I also rotated my rubber. I believe I told you, I believe I told you that in a past video already. But uh, I took the rubber from one side, put it on the other side. So they're spinning in the same direction, but the outside of the passenger steer is now the inside of my driver's steer, vice versa. Just to even out the wear a little bit, I want to get these tires to Christmas, sometime around there, somewhere around New Year's, and then I'll slap some new steers on there. Let's see if I can make it that long. I think I should be able to. I got some pretty good rubber left on them yet. As long as I like rotate them like I just did and it gets them to wear evenly that way. This is Deacon's Corner on the east side of Winnipeg. I stopped in here just to fill up the tanks. There's not going to be any uh, big truck stops or anything where I'm going. I'm going to be going off the main Trans-Canada Highway and straight across southern Manitoba into southern Saskatchewan. And I just wanted to be sure that I have fuel and not have to worry about anything. Uh, usually I fuel in Saskatchewan, it's a little bit cheaper there. I made my decision, here we are. But last week we had that heavy, heavy load that we picked up, those steel plates, right? We picked them up in Asherson by Edmonton, Alberta, brought them all the way here to Manitoba, and I had the wind at my back the entire way here, it was pushing me along. We actually got incredible fuel economy. 35 liters per 100 kilometers, or 35, or yeah, 35 point something liters per 100 kilometers, or 6.64 miles per gallon US, pulling all that weight. That turned out pretty good. <laughs> so the load we're picking up today is gonna be pretty light as well. And the load coming back, that'll be a little heavier. Those are some reels, like those big reels that people use for like hydro wires and like underground wires and stuff for whatever they use them for. They're, they're wires that are rolled up into reels, right? And we're gonna pick those up uh, either tomorrow afternoon or the next day in the morning, depending on how fast I can get these two drops off on this load I'm picking up. And speaking of which, they're waiting there for me already. It's sitting there, I can pick it up anytime, anytime I want to, today or tonight, but the load's not gonna tie itself down, usually. So I'll have to tie it down when I get there, and it's not gonna deliver itself, so we better get these wheels turning. This is my project for today. A Little bit of a messy load, but it's definitely not the worst I've ever seen. I'm gonna quickly tie this down. Well, it won't be quick. It'll take a little while. <laughs> we tie this down and we'll hit the road. It's not going too far, it's just going to Weyburn in Saskatchewan. It's about five hours from here, I'd say, something like that. So, it does look pretty complicated, doesn't it? <laughs> it is, a little bit. But there's some loads that we pick up uh, south of Winnipeg near Winkler. Of, uh, oh, stuff somewhat like this, actually. Pick that stuff up and those loads those loads are scary sometimes. Sometimes you have to refuse them just because they were loaded incorrectly. You have to be very careful the way you load that kind of freight. So some kind of freight is easy to load, right? Lumber, for instance. But when you get to stuff that can roll around like this, a bunch of little pieces on the inside, you have to make sure that every single little piece can be secured and pushed down by a strap in some way, shape, or form. So this will be a little bit of a... A little bit of a fun job to do, but shouldn't take us too, too long. This one looks pretty good. Weyburn, see if there's any room for us at that co-op. Unlikely by the time we get there, but I'm sure I can find a spot to park somewhere in town. And then this gets delivered just a few miles outside of town tomorrow morning. these trailers they're rentals they're not ours but they have uh, winches that are welded on you can't slide them 
So they're welded in place? I don't like that. I don't know why they still make trailers like that. Like, we know already a better way of doing it, yet they still keep doing it. <laughs> then you can't move the winches, right? You can't move them to exactly where you need them. Sometimes it's a lot harder to tie down freight, like, like this. Well, it's the way it is. It's the way the cookie crumbles. Burn. The co-op truck stop is ahead of us. I'm really hoping there's going to be a spot there for me. It's 12:30 at night, so I highly doubt it because there's only like 15 spots there now. There used to be a hundred. Oh, let's turn these off. We're in town. Yeah, there used to be. I've, I've told you this before. Those of you who watch my channel regularly, I'm just repeating myself. I know, but for the new people. In Weyburn, Saskatchewan, there used to be this nice big co-op truck stop, right? They've got an awesome like restaurant and lounge there, beautiful truck stop. There used to be tons of parking for tons of trucks. You can fit like, well, maybe not 100, but you know, 70, 60 trucks or something. I don't know, lots of trucks. You can fit a lot of trucks in there. And then uh, they decided to build a grocery store on the parking lot where we parked. <laughs> and then they paved the lot and obviously then they put up signs that said no trucks because they don't want trucks to go and mess up their brand new asphalt. I'm like, oh, okay, okay. So they shrunk the lot down from where we could park, down from what, like 60, 70 trucks to maybe like 15, 20. But don't worry, there's like 40 trucks that pack themselves in there every night anyway. <laughs> it's just chaos. At least the last time I was there it was. So we'll, we'll see how, how bad it is today. This is Highway 39 here. That takes us down to Portal, North Dakota, where we cross into the U.S. sometimes. And that takes us up to Regina. Regina, Saskatchewan. There's co-op across the street. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna find any parking there, but how am I supposed to see traffic coming here? You ever see any traffic? You always gotta like turn and point your nose this way. Any traffic coming? No traffic coming. Awkward angle for an intersection. That's why a lot of times uh, highway engineers will make the road curve so that you hit it at a 90 degree angle, not like this. It's very hard to see oncoming traffic then in a truck and a car. Oh, whatever. Ah, oh, yeah, look at this. There's all these trucks packed out here. That means it's full. I'll turn in here to show you. Let's see if we can even get through here. Oh, we can't even get through there. No, I'm not going in there. I'm not going in there. Oh, wait, maybe I should have. No, I'm not going in there. No, we'll go in the back here. There might be a spot right here that I see. I see a spot right here. Am I seeing things? Am I seeing things? Is there a spot right here? There's a, there's, no, that's not a spot. There's a telephone pole there. Huh. Okay. See, and then there's a uh, parking over there, but that's all taken up already. Uh, there to be one but hey we won't know unless we check all filled up filled up filled up filled up yep that's all filled up over there that's filled up over here I mean I'm pretty sure
Sure looks like it. That's all filled up there. No spots for Trucker Josh. No spots for me. This is a road. I don't want to go and park down there. Okay, so I'm going to go around the block and come back in again. Try one more time. Found a spot. Right on the edge here. I actually nosed in at first. And then I turned around and I was like, wait a second. I nosed in against that pole, right? So I'd have to back out in the morning. I just wanted to quickly grab the spot before someone else would. And then I looked around here, I'm like, oh, that's pretty quiet. Right? So I figured, I'll slowly turn around. So I backed myself in there. Lots of room for any traffic coming in that driveway to go around me. My truck is actually leaning towards the passenger side like that, so my head will be higher than my feet, so I won't wake up with a headache or anything. It's a nice peat right there. But we'll go back here, show you what I'm talking about. So that's the pole right there. I could probably get my trailer in between the pole and this trailer, but I'm fine where I am there. I had my nose right up here, and then I was like, well, if I wake up in the morning and you know, people could block me in, I don't want to give them the opportunity. And then here, we don't want to run over that in the morning either. Obviously, they've had problems with that, so they've installed these posts. But anyways, that's my day. We made it here to Weyburn. We unload just down the road. First thing in the morning. And then we head over to Lampman. I couldn't think of the name before. Lampman. One word. Lamp. Man. Lampman. And that's our second delivery, and then I gotta come back here to Weyburn, just over there. Somewhere? Where's Weyburn here? Over there. And grab some reels. Head back to Winnipeg. So thanks for hanging out with me today, everybody. Appreciate it. Don't forget to subscribe. We make new videos every day. Take care, and I'll see you tomorrow.